I'm fascinated with airplanes. As a matter of fact, from time to time, when I'm flying a Cessna 172, I'm in communications with the air traffic controller, the guy in the tower at the airport. And what is very interesting about this, one of the key protocols that's necessary when communicating with the person in the tower is that you need to read back the instructions that they have given. For example, when you are making your approach and you want to have a landing, you would radio to the air traffic controller and say, this is Cessna 172, and you read your tail number, your tail sign, and request landing on runway 20, for example. The air traffic controller would respond by basically saying, if it is clear, he'll read your tail sign and he'll say, you are clear to land on runway 20. And he'll probably give details about the wind and the direction it's coming from and so forth. But he expects the pilot to repeat what he heard. The reason for this is the pilot, the air traffic controller needs to be sure that the pilot has heard his facts correctly. And that is one of the things that we have encountered as we seek to know the will of God. We're going to discover today that in knowing and seeking the will of God, that we must be correct in our facts. Our facts must be correct. The reason is, sometimes if we get our facts wrong, we could be wrong, but as in the case of an airplane, you could be dead wrong. As Christians, we are in the battle of life and the battle for life. And so we need to ensure that our facts are correct. Let us turn to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 5, and let's look at verse 20, speaking about the importance of ensuring that our facts are correct. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This must be a confused individual, you might say. Someone who would confuse good for evil or light for darkness or bitter for sweet, yet God's word doesn't make any mistakes. Indeed, in our choices, in our decisions, in the courses we take in our lives, our decision to go against the will of God is tantamount to looking at good and calling it evil, or looking at light and calling it darkness. As children of God, seeking to know the will of God and to walk in the purposes of God, our facts must be correct. And where do we get our facts? We get our facts from his word. God's word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. In another passage, it says, this is a more sure word. Of prophecy. It is correct. It is accurate. It has been tested and proven time and time and time again. It has been uh, the, the bulwark of people for generations, for millennia. This word is correct. And so as we align ourselves with the word, then we are walking in wisdom. We are walking in in light, we are calling good, good, and evil, evil. We are calling light, light, and darkness, darkness. We are calling sweet, mm, sweet, and bitter, bitter, because we are aligning with God's word. This is really important. And over in the New Testament, when uh, the, the Apostle Paul was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1, and let's look at a few verses there where he was trying to re-emphasize and reinforce a very similar concept that we should, that we can trust God's wisdom, that we indeed can put confidence in that word. 
we need to ensure that our facts are correct. Let's start with verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, and not many mighty, not many noble are called. Hmm. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, the righteousness and the sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. So in other words, Paul is emphasizing here to the Corinthian church that God sometimes uses the things that we call foolish to confound the wise. His, his wisdom that people often trample on the ground and say, oh, that's, that's old-fashioned, that no longer applies today. That same word, which is foolishness, indeed becomes wisdom. It confounds even the most scholarly, the most erudite. This wisdom of God is timeless. So as we seek to know his will, we need to ensure that as we examine the facts of our lives, the facts of the case, the facts of our circumstances, we need to ensure that we are correct and we are accurate. In other words, that we are aligned with this word. That is our endeavor and that is our desire because we want to know the will of God. Yes, facts are important and Accurate facts are doubly important. As we navigate the airways and the waterways and the roadways of our lives, let us align our facts with God's word. And let us use that word as our barometer, as our roadmap to ensure that we are not confused, that we are not misguided by things that the world may consider to be wisdom. For indeed, as the Bible says here, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Won't we thank God for his word? And let us thank him for being our guide as we ensure that our facts are correct. Let us pray. Father, today we praise you that we are not left to navigate the vast oceans of life without a compass and without a map. And your word is that map for us. And Lord, I thank you so much that you've encouraged us today as we make our decisions and as we make our moves in life, as we order our lives, that we should ensure our facts align with your word. Our facts must be correct. And we know that you are correct because you have never failed yet. You have never lost yet. No, you have never been ashamed because you are God. And you said those who trust you, they will never be ashamed. So we come into alignment with you today. We thank you for leading us through this experience and this process. We would know your will and we would do your will. Strengthen us, empower us, elevate us, illumine us, we pray, by your spirit divine, in Jesus' name. Amen.